Hey, well, welcome to the channel. It's um, Thursday. It's about five o'clock, and uh, Lick and I had a really, really good Thanksgiving dinner today at uh, at the Duke's. It was really a little bit more food than I really needed to eat, but we had a great time, and I hope everybody else is enjoying a nice, peaceful Thanksgiving with their family today. And uh, I'm gonna walk around. The other night in a in a, when I did the, the premiere of the video, I asked if uh, you all wanted to see kind of a, the rural areas around Chiang Mai, outside of Chiang Mai, and somebody showed some interest in it. So I figured today I'm, I'm going to walk around the area where I live in the, in the community and, and let you see how, how Thai people really live. And, uh, and I'm going to start out at this temple. This is really a beautiful old temple. I don't know the name of it. I, I know there's a name for it and I'll put it in, in the description, but uh, it's really an old temple and Lek and I have been here several times when they've had different different things here. But, uh, and I'm gonna tell you a story about a con man that ended up in Chiang Mai and, and I just recently got up on this story and it's, it's really, it's mind boggling uh, the stuff that this guy was able to do. He's, he, I can't figure out whether, there's so many people reporting on this guy and there's so many inconsistencies. I can't figure out whether he's a Canadian or an American. I think he's an American who launched on, latched on to a Canadian woman. And uh, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the FBI compares him to, to Charles Manson and uh, David Koresh. He was just really a super con man, but he ended up, uh, ended up here in Chiang Mai, believe it or not. But anyway, I'll turn the camera around so you can see this beautiful temple. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is kind of the neighborhood temple. And uh, it's really, really beautiful. It's not a real big one. But uh, I have come here when they have the... Uh, they have one day of the year where everybody donates money to the temple. And I wish I could find, if I can find the pictures, I'd love to show it to you because this area right here was just full of trees of money. I mean, it, as high as is six to eight, the trees went six to eight feet high. It was just loaded with money, money that people had donated to the, uh, to the temple. And there's two or three temples here in the area that I live in. But this is the one that's a little bit more the local people come to. But they have all kinds of different vents here. It's really pretty, it's really old too. But anyway, getting back to this guy, his, uh, his real name was George Patrick Doobie. And, uh, by the time he got to, uh, to Chiang Mai, he was 56 years old. And how he got in, into to Thailand, I, I, I have no idea. Um, I'll, I'll, I can't, there's no way in, I mean, if I, if I covered all the stuff that this guy has done over the, the period of uh, 30 years, I mean, I, I'd probably be walking from here to China, so I'm not gonna, I'll just go over some of the highlights of, of what I've read that he, he's, he's done. He originally was in California and he ended up marrying a woman who was one of the co-founders of Herbalife. And they ended up, you know, they ended up getting a divorce, and, and uh, I read somewhere his, his part of the divorce settlement was something like a million, $11 million or something to that effect. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of sketchy as to actually how much it actually was. And during this time, he had also, he, he, had, he had like a cult following, and there was one particular woman that had had followed him, was one of his main followers for about 30 years. And he had had, uh, I think, five children with her. Never married, they never married. 
but he had also had other other wives that he had fathered children with throughout the, the course of 30 years. But to kind of speed forward a little bit, he winds up in Hawaii and he starts a cult out there. And basically what he's doing, he's convincing people that he's, uh, well, it, the article says he was trying to convince people he was Jesus Christ and he had all the answers and some people he, he he claimed he was a, uh, a Saudi prince, uh, you know, just bizarre stuff. But he, he was, the guy was apparently good at what he did. He was very, very uh, convincing and, and very charismatic and, and uh, he, could, uh, he could talk the socks off of a buffalo. And that's basically what he did. And he would get these people to give them all their money give him all their money and their houses and stuff and sign them over to them. Well, if we can get out this way, we'll walk out this way and walk through the neighborhood over here. I don't know if we can or not. The gate might be locked. We'll see. If not, I'll walk around the front. There's a lock on it. I can't see if it's locked or not. Ah, it looks like I can get out. Good. Yeah, we'll walk through this neighborhood over here. This is a really, really neat neighborhood. Let's see. Yeah, we want to go this way. These electric scooters are very, very popular now. But uh, anyway, he, he does this to several people in, in Hawaii. And he's got a following like of about 200 people. And after he cons them out of all their money, then he convinces them to start stealing for him, which they do. And, you know, he's, he's raking in the money. Well, the state police in, in Hawaii start to get on him. And then the FBI start investigating him. And from the best that I can tell, from what I was reading, he uh, he takes off out of Hawaii, gets out of Hawaii, and, and they suspect that he went to back to the United States and was apprehended somewhere in the United States and then brought back to the islands in, in Hawaii and prosecuted. It doesn't say how long he spent in prison or if he even did spend time in prison. There's some saying that he was able to wiggle his way out of it. I, I really don't know. The articles don't say. But, uh, I mean, he, we're talking millions and millions of dollars that this guy has, has uh, conned out of people. Hello. Yeah, this is your, just a regular Thai neighborhood. Hello, how you doing? As a matter of fact, the Mubon that I used to live in is right on the other side of this. But these people are really sweet. And during soccer, I'll come down here and they're all partying. They all invite me in. But uh, anyway, he, he ends up leaving Hawaii from the best that I can figure. Now, I, I, the best thing to do if you're really interested in this guy is just Google his name. And there's so many articles on him and so many people popped up that... Uh, he want, they want a piece of his, his action, that uh, there's a lot of different stories about him. More than I can tell in, in one walk. But uh, he ends up in, uh, in, in Thailand and it sounds to be sometime after the tsunami, which would have been 2004, December of 2004, and he's he's telling everybody that he's a correspondent for CNN and going to make going to make a movie. Hello, hello. CNN has no uh, chicken. Ah, look at the chickens in there. Has no recollection of him ever working for CNN, and it. And nobody, nobody really knows. But anyway, that's what he's telling everybody. Well, he ends up here in Chiang Mai. And from the best I can tell, 
he uh, has a holistic healing center. Now I'll tell you what, I've got some music up here that I know is going to be copyright, copyright protected, so I'm going to shut it off here and I'll continue the story. <laughs> Hello, pork and everything cooking. Wow. I think I can get back now. Hello. She's a uh, recycle color. And they're putting up a new house over here. Really a neat area. Hello there. Hey, how you doing? Swati Cop. Everybody's so friendly. But anyway, as best I can tell, he starts this holistic healing center here. And I've I found no confirmation on that. It's just what I've read. And uh, he hooks up with a, with a Thai girl. And now he's got this girlfriend that, that's been with him for 27 years now. It's, I've read two different stories. One says that, that she came here to Thailand with him. And another one says something a little bit different. I'm going to go with the consensus that she probably came with him. But anyway, he, he, he's living with this, this Thai woman. And he's away from his girlfriend with the uh, that have got his five kids. Now here's a nice marijuana plant for you. Right there. And uh, apparently this guy was just the scum of the earth and, and he uh, he wasn't supporting his five kids and she was having a hard time. Now, like I said, one article I read said that she came to Thailand to talk to him. Uh, and I only read that once. So I'm kind of assuming that, uh, that she might have already been here because it seems like she had a lot of ties to people that lived here in, in Chiang Mai. But uh, one afternoon they meet at a restaurant up in the city not far from the uh, not far from the Iron Bridge and they're in the restaurant and she's you know trying to get him to give her some kind of support some kind of money for the kids you know to help her out because she didn't have anything and uh, they uh, they according to witnesses they get in a heated argument inside the restaurant and uh, it, it carries out into the street <clears throat> and there's there's two different versions of this one version is that she pulled the pulled the gun out and shot him in the chest the other version is that 
they were kind of scuffling. He had the gun and the gun fell out on the ground. She picked it up and shot him. Uh, based on the, the totalitarian, or the, you know, the, the, um, what the hell's the word for that? Based, based on the, the total concept, conception of the, of the charges that were put against her and what she was convicted of, I'm leaning towards the fact that he had the gun and, and dropped it because originally she, after she, uh, after she shoots him, she jumps in the car and takes off and she drives over the iron bridge, throws the gun in the river and uh, shortly thereafter the, the police catch her. And, uh, and she confesses, she says that, you know, yeah, she shot him and He'd been abusing her for 27 years and had, had just basically provoked her to, to uh, go to these drastic measures. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about what you're seeing here. Right over there is a, it, it's a, a small, it used to be a, like a, a rest home a guy built and I don't know what it is now whether they, I know that it was for sale for a long time I did go through it they got a beautiful swimming pool over there and there were about three or four four people that were living there but I don't know if it survived but we're gonna walk up this way but uh, she confesses and and they hire her uh... hello must have must have been a really good must have been a really really good lawyer because uh, they ended up dropping the gun charge. The gun charge carried 11 years. And, uh, you know, the murder charge would have, would have carried, you know, life in prison. Now, this is a little canal. This is kind of neat. They've got, uh, we may walk down there. I've never been down there. Hello. Well, that's somebody's house. I can't get in there. But they've got a little bridge going over to the houses there. Hello. Now, right here on the left, they do catering for all these parties that they have. And they're kind of busy right now. Yeah, people here getting their food. This is really a beautiful area. But anyway, back to the story where y'all shoot me. Um, she gets locked up. She's held in the woman's prison, you know, in, uh, in Chiang Mai, the one that, that's right across from the, uh, the massage place that's, you know, no longer there now. And uh, she has to wait like 16 months before she goes to court. And... Uh, she was tried by a, a panel of two judges and she got three and a half years. They, uh, they listened to the arguments and they listened to testimony about the brutality of her, her conditions with him. And also they, they pretty much determined that, that he was the one who actually brought the gun to the uh, to the restaurant, so it was actually his gun that that she shot him with. So she dropped; they dropped those charges, and uh, she drew three and a half years. She had uh, she had already done a year and a half waiting on trial, so she only had two years ahead of her. And for the best that that I know from from what I read on the article, uh, The minute she was released from, from prison, she was deported and went to Switzerland or somewhere like that. But uh, people came out of the woodworks after this guy was killed, uh, you know, trying to recoup some of their money. And the estate, apparently he, had, he still had a lot of property left in, uh, left in uh, Hawaii. This is a really neat area back in here. He had a lot of property left in, in uh, Hawaii. Now, whatever he had here, 
if he had anything here. It doesn't, I don't, I don't really know. That would have had to have been in the, in the girlfriend's name and really nobody could touch it but her, so. You know, that's probably, if, if he had anything here, she would have gotten it. But uh, the, uh, one of her, one of the children from one of the previous marriages ended up getting custody of the five kids that were involved and she raised them and while while the mother was in prison now afterwards it doesn't really say and the uh, one of the sisters was put as executor over his assets and it doesn't say how it was distributed it didn't say who got any money or you know what the deal was but uh, it was a really interesting story and, and if you want something to read just google that guy's name and it'll just you know just floor you the way he was able to con people and, and uh, get enormous amounts of money and get people to do do things you know that were definitely illegal um, it just, just it's just mind-blowing there are some really really nice houses that are in this area and you know the thing about Thai neighborhoods are is you might have a I'm sure that dog's behind that gate um, you might have houses that are very well built on one side and then the next house might be a little bit different you know uh, everybody lives in harmony here. Hey, little buddy. What are you doing? Yeah, you're friendly. I can tell you're wagging your tail. Wow, see, here's a modern style house built in here. But everybody is so friendly here. I mean, that was one of the big problems I had when I moved to Hoi Hin that you just didn't have the uh, the community type atmosphere that you have here. Everybody is just so nice and, and friendly and everybody knows everybody. Now I'm trying to think. I don't think this goes through. That will take us right back to where we came. But I can't remember if this goes all the way through or not. No, it doesn't. But this, this here runs along the clong that goes through. But we'll go up here to the road here and make another left. It's really a beautiful area. This little guys. And they have these throughout the, uh, throughout the village. And what they are is they're water dispensers. You bring your big bottle of water in there and you pay like a you know, 10 bot, you get a whole bottle of water and it's filtered water. Hey, buddy. He ain't even gonna pay attention to me. And we're coming out on the road that we walked across. Wow, here's a real old place in there. I have never seen that before. I'm usually riding my bicycle through here or, or my motorcycle, so I don't notice a lot of this stuff when I'm, if I'm not out walking. And right here, around the corner is where I get my food sometimes. Right here on the left. Hello. Right here. She makes some really good kapow and her soup is excellent. style house right here there's other areas here too that I'll show you uh, they're kind of spread out now, this used to be a restaurant yeah it still is See, that's so pretty 
they're kind of spread out and I, what I have to do is drive to a different area and get out and walk around. And I'll, uh, I'll try to do that in some of the upcoming videos so you can actually see what you know rural life is like. And then you've got the market and the market's just like all the other markets. And a policeman lives here. And see, we're right back out at the temple again where we came in. to get my motorcycle fixed over here on the left hand side but since I got the big one I take it to another guy that's a little bit more experienced working on big engines hey girl Ooh. But yeah he can fix about anything over there good how you doing there's a lot of little houses in behind there. There's like a little neighborhood back in there. Hello. Let's see, we came in. I think we came in this one. But I, I guess the moral to this story is, you know, if you, if you retire to Thailand, or you come here and you meet people, it's a lot different than, you, you can make friends with people, but you have to understand that you don't know a lot about these people other than what they tell you. You know, in, in your home country, you know, you grew up with most of your friends, so you know their background, but you can, uh, you never know who you're running into here. You know, I've run into people that said they were spies for the CIA and, you know, uh, uh, special forces from Vietnam. All, I mean, all kinds of crazy crap. Uh, you know, I just and, and you don't know. You don't know what's true and what, what's not true. So, I, you know, I usually uh, take what people people tell you kind of with a grain of salt. Because, um, like I said, you don't know what's true and what's not. When people get to drinking, they'll, you know, they'll tell you just about anything. Well, I'm going to make it back to the bike and uh, edit this video and digest my food a little bit more. And Lex got to teach until about 7 o'clock, so I got plenty of time. And I hope you all enjoyed this video and uh, leave me some comments. Let me know what you all think. And, and like I said, if you're curious about this guy, just, uh, just Google his name. There's at least a hundred articles written on him and uh, when you get into one you'll, you'll find that they'll, they'll thread to others. It's just amazing what this guy was able to do in 30 years. But anyway, we'll see y'all later. Bye bye.